Okay, welcome to another Smart Board video um, presentation. And uh, today's topic is going to be solutions and delusions. And these um, are two separate topics, but they're, they're um, really related to each other. And so um, uh, actually, I think what I'm going to do is actually divide this up into two videos. Uh, this first one um, will talk about um, how they're related and as I get into some detail about dolutions and then I think I'll make another um, video specifically uh, about the solutions part rather than, than make one long video I think I'll divide it into two. Um, but the topic of solutions and dilutions in, in um, basic lab techniques course um, is actually a very key skill. Um, I mean, you're very early in your careers and we present uh, a lot of information in this course and I'm sure, um, you know, uh, you're trying to sort out uh, from all these things, but, uh, you know, it's, this is a foundational skill. This is a skill that when our students go on their internships or we have our advisory boards, um, you know, making solutions and preparing dilutions are um, um, kind of a skill that if, if you're a research technician, this is what you're going to be doing. So it's um, key that um, you get a good understanding of this. So, you know, make sure as you go through this, you know, don't just quiz through it. Make sure that at the end of the day, and particularly at, by the end of the course, that you feel comfortable with your understanding of what's going on with making up solutions uh, and preparing delusions. So, let's look at some definitions. And the first one we'll put up here is concentration. And the concentration is notion that kind of ties the solutions and delusions together. So, what is our definition of concentration in terms of a, a chemistry application? And um, the first one, we're going to say, it's the strength of a solution. Right? And, you know, in the everyday life, we talk about, you know, how strong is the coffee, how strong is the tea, you know. So that's the notion of concentration. The more concentrated it is, the, the stronger it is. So a concentration is kind of a, um, you know, measure of the strength. But that's, you know, not a very mathematical uh, definition. So we're going to say that it's the amount of a solute dissolved in a given volume of solvent. And here again the notion of solvent, you know, in most of the labs that we're doing and in um, biological systems that solvent is going to be water in our aqueous systems, but it might well be uh, say alcohol. We see a number of say solutions of ethanol and methanol where those um, are the are the solvent. But so it's the amount of the solute which is dissolved in a given volume of solvent. So the more of the solute that's dissolved in a given volume, then the higher the concentration would be. There are various ways that we write the um, concentration um, um, solutions. You know, you've been working problems that show that probably the most used is being infamilarity. Um, another pretty common one would be what we call how much mass 
to volume. And so you might have something like milligrams per mil, right? So that would be mass to volume. You might have grams per liter, right? So um, that would um, tell you a, a type of concentration. Another thing we looked at are percents. Okay. What's the percent concentration? And another one that's maybe not as frequently used, but you'll see, is the term X. So you might see a solution. This is a 50X solution. Or we'd say this is a 58 concentrate. So if you had a 50X solution, you would tend to dilute that 1 to 50, 50 fold to be down to 1X. Now the problem with the X thing is that has to be related to something. The molarity, the, the, you know, the mass, the volume, and the percents uh, are um, uh, based on uh, masses that uh, are fine. If you have something that's, where they tell you this is a, some X solution, somewhere you have to have a recipe or a reference to what the 1X is. But I bring that up because it is something we'll see um, in uh, some of the experiments you'll get in the program. You'll find some what we call stock solutions that are made at a higher concentration that would be used at so that we dilute them to the working strength. So there's that term dilution. We took a 50x solution and we did a dilution to bring it to working strength. So all these things are related and they're tied together by the notion of concentration. So now, solution. What's going to be our definition of a solution? We're going to say that a solution is a homogeneous mixture of Solutes dissolved in a solvent. Okay. Notice that we said dissolved. Um, um, this is you know, like if you're dissolving, you know, sugar in water or salt in water. They're dissolving, and you mix them, and that becomes a homogeneous mixture. Now, this is different than related thing. Now, I'm going to put this over here on the right because I want to mention it, but it's not really the topic of our discussion. It's a suspension. Okay? A suspension is um, a mixture where the um, um, solutes, in this case, would be dispersed um, in um, um, in the in the solvent per se. This would be, um, and it doesn't have to be liquid. Dust in the air is a suspension. Um, when it rains and you see the Yadkin River turn red because of the red clay that is suspended in the water. It's been, you know, it's been, the force of the current has suspended it from the bottom. If it were to become still again, you know, when the, then that clay would, not, would settle back out. So it's not dissolved in there, it's suspended. And so you've probably had medicines that said it was an oral suspension, right? And it said you're going to have to shake it before you use it because there's probably something in there that has settled um, to the bottom. It's not dissolved, but it's just suspended. So you're going to have to resuspend it to get it mixed before you take it. Otherwise, you would take the medicine off the top and not get the stuff that had settled to the bottom. So um, there, there are times in the lab when you uh, make things that are suspension, but 
what we're going to be concentrate mostly are solutions and our definition is there again a homogeneous mixture of two or more solvents that are actually dissolved in the solvent. Okay, what about dilution? Um, our dilution, our definition of dilution is going to be increasing the proportion of solvent to solute thereby decreasing decreasing the concentration of solute per volume. Okay, let's look at what it said. Now, first of all, there we see that word concentration again. So, um, we're going to say we're going to increase the proportion of the solvent to the solute. Okay, so what we're talking about that um, 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 that coffee that we made, we said we got it too strong. It was too concentrated. So what could we do? We add solvent. So we could add some water. So that would increase the proportion of the solvent water to the solute. And then thereby decreasing the concentration of solute per volume. Now we added some volume, but the concentration per volume of the solute was decreased. So we diluted it out. Right? By, in the case of the coffee, we added some water to dilute it. So we were decreasing the concentration by adding solvent. So that's the notion of dilution. So we're going to start our a conversation about dilutions. And the information that I'm going to be talking about can be found in your referenced um, pages or in the in your Seidman text. Or there's some of this information that's on the dilutions lab um, that, that you're doing in the, in the lab. So um, that information is kind of in that kind of preamble um, to that dilutions lab. And you know, the one of the difficulties in, in dilutions is in the way that they're presented in um, procedures that you're following, and there's a lot of different um, um, ways that people refer to the way they do dilutions, and so you have to be careful that you understand what they mean. Um, and sometimes that's difficult, uh, you know, unless you have the context that they're working from. Um, you know, so, you know, I said there in the lab, the first rule in making dilutions is to read the procedures carefully so that you understand what it's saying. I said, for example, if the instruction one mil diluted to 50 mils is not the same as one added to 50 mils. You know, one to 50 mils diluted to indicates that your final volume is going to be 50 mils. So you're essentially going to have one mil that you're going to have to add 49 mils to get it to 50 mils. Where if you said one mil added to 50 mils, you know, it's going to be one plus 50, which is going to give you 51 mils, right? So those are similar sounding things but they're not, they don't mean the same thing. So there are a variety of ways of people uh, speak about it. And unfortunately, 
these can be confusing.